On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, Freeze wants a cheap suppressor, the plate rack is installed, stem visual walkout, and does Wayne LaPierre have a girlfriend? Okay, good morning everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 133 of the John 1911 podcast. How's it going this morning, Freeze? It's going pretty good. I actually actually got normal sleep last night. <laughs> oh, Oh, you didn't work last night? No. Nah. Oh, that's why you nah. sound tired. <laughs> no, okay. no. Uh, no, I, I work tonight. But... Hmm. All right. So, yeah, it's even late for us. It's like, you know, a little bit 10 after 9 in the morning. And, uh, you know, you, you even reached out. And you were like, hey, we're going to do a pod. And I'm like, yes, we are. And uh, I figured you've been up all night, like, you know drinking caffeine and swearing at the ghetto and you know and just basically get yourself all riled up for a podcast i'm talking to you this morning nah. you're like you're like uh <laughs> <laughs> no because i'm i'm i've only been up for about an hour i actually slip in which you know i mean normally i mean normally oh when, I'm not, I'm, when i'm not working i'm up at four or five o'clock in the morning anyway because well you know when you're yeah when, vampire <laughs> you know those are the hours you keep but uh no, Day actually, walker. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm definitely not a day walker that's for damn sure mm-hmm. but uh but yeah so i actually you know running around yesterday and all that so you know i actually slept in yeah which was um, change i uh i uh took yesterday as a um, little bit of a R and R cause I was out on the range on uh, Saturday uh, trying to finish up with the um, working in the pit. And uh, yeah. we had bought some of that. <coughs> Do you remember what it's called? It's, it's like, it's like straw that's woven into a nylon net. I don't know you know, I don't remember what the official name of it is, but it's just kind of like, I just call it like straw matting. <laughs> you you know? know what? That's a good, that's, that's why you get paid the big bucks. So I was out there looking at it and, you know, cause I'd put down a whole bunch of it front to back on the left side of the berm closest to the driveway <laughs> and uh-huh. close, you know, closer to the briar patch. And I'll tell you what, dude, it looks fantastic. You can see tons of stuff growing. It made oh, a huge man, when, difference. When, yeah. When I was out there, um, I don't know what was it Tuesday, Wednesday, something, whatever day it was. Man, it it it, it that stuff works. It works real well. So I yeah. still had five rolls of it. So what I did is the outside of the berm is not as bad as the inside of the berm as far as the erosion is. So I went ahead instead of going front to back over the top, I went to horizontal. And started mm-hmm. dressing up the inside of the berm with the last five rolls I had, and yeah. uh, you know, by myself on that hill, and you know, so, I mean, it just kind of, kind of, I mean, look, yeah, I've definitely, wor- I mean, look, chainsaw parties a hell of a lot harder than that, by by, oh by, yeah, but it's not easy, you know, and it's just like, ugh, you know, so I went out there, did yeah. that, and um, actually, I was going to bring this up with you, um, the plate rack, so. For those that don't follow the um, the website and the and, and the uh, Facebook page, uh, we have a plate rack, a falling plate rack. We we bought it basically at NRA show, but that got completely screwed up. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I was just like, you know, <laughs> ta- I mean, don't make it hard for me to give you money, Jesus. Yeah. So exactly. But um, you know, freeze at the last minute was like, yeah, I'll you know I'll come out and you know help out with the plate rack and then. It turned into freeze. Basically, did the whole plate rack by himself. So it's it's now the freeze plate rack. <laughs> well, look, it had to be done. It had to be done, and it's you it's heavy too. Unassembled, just sitting there, staring at you, taunting you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, this has to be built. So you know, we just we just did it. Yeah, and I mean, that thing. I don't know. That heavy. thing's got to weigh three, four hundred pounds. It's uh, oh, I think it's over three fifty. I think it's close. It's it's not four, but it's it's it. You could round up to four, I think. And um, this is interesting because you know we left it at the back of the pit, and we were shooting. We have, I mean, if, 
it on video. We, there's video of us both doing it. And I may move it towards the berm side. Okay. And the reason, you know, and we, you haven't heard any of this. So we're just, you know, w- welcome to the morning meeting at uh, john1911.com. So the reason we initially put it at the back of the pit was we've got a lot of what I called safety zone behind the property. So we've got, I mean, a thousand yards behind us that if bullets go up off that plate rack, they can, you know, they can fall and do whatever. So, but I was doing some research and my, my concern is I don't, I don't have a good understanding of when you shoot a falling piece of steel, if the bullet doesn't disintegrate, where does the bullet go? Because I have a hard time figuring because you normally just use vector addition and angles yeah. and you can kind of figure out where stuff's going. Yeah. But since the plate rack is is giving, I don't know I don't know at what point, worst case scenario, a bullet, you know, what angle the bullet takes. Now I did some research and there's some people on the internet, if I some like technical people, I think they're saying possibly thirty five degrees. But the thing with 35 degrees is it's like, what are you, what are you counting the starting angle at? Because. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the, I mean, 35 degrees, I mean, it's fluid depending on the angle of the plate when it, when it goes off. Cause plate racks don't sit straight zero degrees up. They sit, they sit forward at a little bit of an angle and you yeah. can adjust it. And then, so that 35, is it on the axis horizontal or is it on an axis you know uh at the angle of the plate yeah the angle of attack of the plate and it you know there's so what i'm going to do is basically i'm going to hump that plate rack up to the up to the berm now i'm going to set up some high speed cameras and i'm going to slowly shoot the plate rack like worst case like you know i'll shoot at the bottom of the plates and whatever but i'm going to try the what i anticipate being the worst case scenario let's say you take a large bull like a 45, a slow bullet, and nick the top of the plate. Don't even hit the face, hit the top, and I can do it. Yeah. And I want to get on video where that bullet launches. And I'm hoping it still hits that berm. Because mm, okay. it would be more convenient <clears throat> to be able to shoot the plate rack in the bur- in the pit and not have to shut down two miles of trails in the back of the property that nobody can go back there. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Mm -hmm. Well, and and here's the other thing you also have to take into consideration is uh, misses. Because where the plate rack's at now, if you miss the steel, that bullet goes right down range, which is fine. It's going to stay on the property. But again, you're talking about totally shutting everything down. Yeah, right now the, the the bullets are going since you know because the the pit isn't perfectly flat. It has to pitch for water, mm-hmm. and you can see this. It actually goes down into the yeah. bottoms uh-huh. um, around the hundred yard target, but eh, I mean, one hundred and fifty yard target. But if you saw a video of us with uh, Officer Mike shooting at one fifty, we yeah. had to shut down the one fifty target because we've had so much erosion. That there's a lot of stone down there and bullets were going up from the stone. Yeah. And it's just like, eh, I'm just like, you know what? Let's see if I can't put the bullets into the berm that I spent all the money on right up here in the pit. So, and, you know, maybe I can dress it up. Let's say it's at the top. It's like, oh, man, the bullets are large fragments are hitting, it, say, the top quarter of the berm. Okay. I just take some railroad ties and build up a couple <coughs> feet up in, behind the plate rack. And, yeah. And, you know, we're, um, you know, we're good to go. Yeah, actually, that sounds, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, we even talked about capping it, you know, building some kind of a a structure. But, I mean, if the berm serves that purpose, that's, that's easier. You know. Yeah. um, You know, we had talked about maybe putting like a roof over it is what you're talking as a cap. And, I, you know, I just – that may still end up happening. I just don't know. It depends on how bad it is. Yeah. So, Well, one one project, you know. Yeah, one project uh, at a time. Let's get it moved up. 
in front of a berm and see what happens. You know, so we'll just have to, you know, we'll just have to, uh, you know, I mean, it sucks. It's just safety testing. We got to, we got to get it on. Cause the thing is you have to record it and you have to look at it in slow motion. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, cause you can't see everything all at once. And so, you know, it's boring. It's shoot, record one shot, watch it, shoot, record one shot, watch it. Yeah. So, Hey, um, make, make something more fun. <laughs> um, you, Explain this to me. You sent this to you sent this to me yesterday. So you've got this you've got this AR pistol thing that is just like the fire breathing dragon. And we discussed maybe you getting some kind of can for it just to tame it. Yeah. What what is that suppressor? You it's two hundred seventy five dollars. Yeah. I mean that is what is the suppressor? You mean what kind? Yeah. Who makes it? And what um, is it? Uh, um it's uh shoot hold on let me let me pull it up you know um, what i'll bring it up here because you, uh, you sent it it's uh radical firearms it's radical the, uh, firearms yeah it's the uh it's the rf 7.62 i guess that's the model number of it but it's a, it's a 30 cal can and uh, it's it's they've got a, a video of them running this on a uh, um a 556 a 300 blackout in a uh, in a a 308 bolt rifle you know and they've got side by side video where you know shooting the gun and showing the decibels without the can and shooting gun with the decibels with the can. You know, of course, you know, they're they're pimping their product. So <clears throat> you know, um, and it's a no frills suppressor. And that's that's what they're saying. You know, it's not machine gun rated or anything like that. It's good. It's um it looks like it, it's direct thread. I'm looking at a listing for it. Yeah, it's a direct thread, um, five eighths by twenty four, or is a thread. Okay. Yeah. And um, so it looks like it's rated for. I'm looking at the seven six two by thirty nine. It's rated for three oh eight and obviously three hundred blackout. Yeah. And it's not machine gun rated. It weighs twenty point four ounces. It's eight inches long. And here's the thing. Like this website that has it in stock, they're listing it for four forty nine. Well, you had told me you saw it where for what? I'm, I'm 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 on the silencer shops website, and they they've got the MSRP four ninety nine uh, on sale for two seventy five. If you pre order it, yeah, it's back ordered right now, but. But there, but you can buy it at the back order. Yeah, as far yeah, I mean, I, you know, look, you got to wait a year for the NFA paperwork to come back. Does it really matter if it's back ordered? Well, it does because if you don't get a serial number, you can't apply for your NFA paperwork. So it's basically until it gets in stock and then apply. Yeah. So it could matter, um, but you know, look, I like the price and. I don't know anything about the suppressor, but there's got a couple things going for it because I we had talked about this off pod, and I said, "Look, we don't need machine gun rated. That just makes them heavy and stupid." Yeah. And but the thing is, because you like to run a lot of these weird, like you know, like com block guns, you know, these AKs and stuff. It's like you know the threads, and then you're dealing with the the muzzle devices, and it's the stuff's more likely to be off off uh, off level, off canter. And, uh, you know, you can get baffle strikes. A direct thread, while maybe not as elegant, honestly, reduces a lot of that happy horse shit with some of these bullshit guns. It's not going to be an issue on your ARs, but, you know, other guns, it could be an issue. Um, yeah. And, look, if this thing isn't the quietest, best, bestest, most most suppressedest, you know, silencer that's ever been made, <laughs> I don't care. We just ha- – we have to just – we have to knock – 
the fire breathing dragon off the front of your gun. That's just crickets crazy. <laughs> You're yeah. like, hey, you, you're like, hey, I want to go out to the range and I want to shoot the one to five drill. I'm like, yeah, you're going to set the damn targets on fire. Uh, I, mean, it's, I mean, you know, <laughs> it may just scorch him a little bit. <laughs> God almighty. You know, like, because you were shooting at, like, your father was there. And your father's deaf anyway, isn't he? Yeah, and he's it was just deaf. like. It's like, good God. He was like, holy <laughs> shit. It is yeah, loud. The deaf, the, yeah, if the deaf dude is worried about it. Well, you know, here's the thing. <clears throat> I always bitch about um, hating brakes because they're obnoxious. Well, let me tell you, this flash can I have on the front of this thing is, a, is, is every bit as obnoxious as a brake. Yeah. But it kind of saves the shooter from the overpressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it works. It does its job. It's just it doesn't do any doesn't do anything for the everybody else on the range. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's you good. have your eyebrow. You have your eyebrows, but the rest of us don't. Well, you know, <clears throat> that's what good uh, hearing protection's for. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, I you know, for hearing protection. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, look. I mean, we're probably making a, a bigger deal than this, than it needs to be. I mean, people are listening going, oh, well, you know, I don't think it's that bad. And it's not. But, I mean, compared to, you know, compared to any other AR, this is noticeably, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a loud gun, you know. It's louder than it should be or needs to be. Yeah. You know, my... My thinking on this is we've never had a noise complaint from the range. And I'm not – I don't feel like we have to have a – I don't feel like we have to have a – like a – like be cognizant of noise per se. But I look at it like this. You know, these little AR guns and TAC rifles – I and mean, we're going to be burning it down in that one pit. I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, you only get so much credit, I kind of feel. And it's like, look, if we're going to get a noise complaint, it's because I want to be shooting a 50. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not not, not a truck gun. Yeah. And it's it's that loud. And I'm like, man, you know, that that's kind of my thinking. It's like, you know... For 275 bucks plus some tax stamp, that just might be some good money for John 1911 to pay for. Well, because I mean, it's just like, I mean, you know, it's, it, it, yeah. So basically, at 205 for the stamp, 275 for the can, I mean, I mean, you know, shoot, what are we, what are we talking about? Uh, um, 500 yeah. bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's man, that's half the price of a lot of freaking cans out there, you know. Oh uh, God! I, I mean, you know, it's I, man, that's that's real short money. So I got a can that's still in jail. That's uh, that's two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, but that's a you know, well, that is what it is, you know. It is but, what it is. But, you know, when it gets freed from jail, it will be a very, very useful tool in the armory. We hope. <laughs> we we well, hope. Okay. <clears throat> Valid point. You know, I mean, I, we're, I'm saying it'll be a useful tool, but, you know, until we get it and use it, we don't know. You know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, I, I just think it's something that we. You know, we definitely need to look at and, you know, consider and, you know, it, and it's not about be, it being the uh, the best 762 by 39 can on the market. I just just to, you know, we can knock down 40, 50 percent of the blast on this gun. I think that's really where the payoff is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree. Um, and the nice thing about this can um I didn't, I didn't do any measuring, but I don't think I have to change the handguard on the, uh, on the, uh, 
pistol either. Oh, because cause you want to fit it under the handguard. Well, yeah, because I'm running a 10 and a half inch barrel, but I'm running an 11 and a half inch handguard, you know, and, and, uh, the flash can, I've got a three and a half inch flash can on there, which sticks out, you know, past the handguard, of course. But, um, you know, if, uh, if it won't fit under the handguard, then I would have to switch out the handguard, which, you know, I really, really don't want to do. Cause I how, like how it's a, so you basically, you're getting about an inch under the handguard. So you'd still get about seven inches out in front of that gun. So, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. Which basically is going to turn it into a carbine. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, a quieter carbine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be yeah. pretty neat. Honestly, that's kind of the same way that my $2,000 upper that we're waiting for is to achieve the same goal. Yeah. Yeah, because that's got, what, a 10-inch barrel with uh, with... It's got a... I think it's got a 10-inch barrel and it's got a 6... Six or an uh, eight inch integrated uh, can. I guess yeah, for those I, that don't know, it, it this upper is um, it's it's a suppressed upper. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. So it's you know it's, it's not it's, it's the, not the US, no it, the U.S. Army put out a solicitation. The, the U.S. Army put out a solicitation for suppressed uppers. It was called the Surge Program, uh, S-U-R-G, Suppressed Upper Receiver Group. And I think SIG actually won the contract, but um, Gemtech submitted an upper. I think possibly uh, – uh, 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 I can't remember who else, who else it was. But, um, you know, Gemtech basically – you know, they're like, well, hell, if we're not, if we can't, you know, if we can't sell this to the government, we're going to go ahead and, you know, we're, we're tooled up anyway. We're going to go ahead and sell to the public. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a lightweight upper. And what it does is it's got a 10 inch barrel. It's got a baffle stack permanently fixed to the front of it. So it's not an SBR. So the overall length is over 16 inches. But then what they did is they put a giant sleeve over the, they didn't just sleeve the baffle stack. What they did is they kept the back of the baffle stack open and they put the sleeve over the um, – or no, they didn't do the back of the baffle stack, but they, they put ports in the, uh, in the barrel and they sleeved it all the way back to, the, to the, uh, the barrel nut. And the space between the rear of the, of the baffle stack and the barrel nut is a, is a, it's an expansion chamber. So a lot of the, a lot of the explosion – can expand and cool off in there and doesn't blow out the gun in theory, doesn't gas the hell out of you. Yeah. And, and, and in turn, because it's all uh, an encapsulated unit, it you have a 16 inch barrel, even though the barrel's only like 10 inches, it turns it into a 16 inch. So it's a single stamp item because you don't have to worry about the SBR portion of it. Yeah. Which actually is kind of nice. It is kind of nice because it's easier technically to take it across state lines. I guess. I mean, I don't. I don't know all that anymore. Yeah. I, some of that I think I knew, and some of it I, I. I you hear different things. ATF's <sighs> telling me it's not a big deal. Um, you know. Uh, you know but, I mean, the thing is with you know SBRs and cans, it, it's not. I mean, you know, you still got to follow the rules, but the rules. They don't worry about that as, as much as they worry about you bringing, you know, your uh, 50 cal BMG, <laughs> you know, your Ma Deuce uh, over state lines. They, you know, they, they look at that more than they do in SBR. Well, that's, 100%, that, that's not that how the, law, the law is written. That is not well, how the law is written at all. Well, but, you know, if you talk to ATF. A, 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 a 50 BMG can go across a state line just like a Glock pistol. It can. Yes, you can take it across state lines, but the ATF likes to know where all their full automatic machine guns are, usually. That's okay, but that's not a 50 BMG. So um, that's, a different, that's a different deal. So um, well, let's get off this. Let's move on to some other stuff. Well, I... 
No, no, I'm talking about a freaking uh, uh, a, a Ma Deuce, you know, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, see, when you say 50 BMG, I'm thinking M- M82 Barrett. No, I was talking about a 50 caliber, a 50 BM, a 50 BMG caliber. No, I, I was talking about you know if if you have your uh, you know your M2 50 cal Browning, your Ma Deuce. Okay. All right. So a class three machine yes. gun. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm not talking about you, talking you didn't initially you you didn't initially say that. You said fifty BMG. So you know BMG that, Browning that went gun. La- Yeah, you can you can get a Winchester model seventy chambered at fifty BMG. Yeah, but I wasn't talking about a rifle chambered. I was talking about an actual BMG. You said a caliber, not a machine gun. That was your mistake. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're, if, if we don't correct it, we're going to get comments on it. Uh, quit being a dick. It's That's terrible. okay, everybody. We know what he meant now. Because I was listening to it, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? So, <laughs> Talking um, about hey, uh, did, Okay. Um... Have you seen any of the latest stuff from uh from the NRA? Did you? I posted something on Facebook. Have you bothered to read any of it, or are you just too disgusted? To Look, it? I've been through shit like this with the NRA because I've been a member of the NRA for you know thirty five years, and I've seen infighting and I've seen little coups go on in the power structure, and I just don't freaking care. I really don't. So no, I haven't really paid much attention to it. Well, it looks like, you know, look, I, I have to be careful here because I don't, I look, I, there's a lot of people on social media that like to stake out positions on either side of this. Like one group is like, fuck the NRA and fuck Louis and LaPierre. Then there's another group that's like, it's not the NRA, it's whatever the, there's a, there's an advertising agency yeah. that the NRA uses. Yeah. And then, but the NRA is also, the NRA is also, uh, or uh, is funneling talent through that agency and making, making people employees of that agency. I, it appears for payroll reasons and for, and for, you know, and, and all this other stuff. Like, for example, I bet you, um, the, the woman on NRA TV, uh, Dana, Dana Lash, she's pro, I, I don't know this. I'm sur- sur- surmising this. She's probably not an employee of the NRA. She's probably an employee of this company, technically, because they run NRA TV. So anyway, you got these people. They don't want to believe that the NRA's got problems. And so they want to point the finger at this advertising law firm group yeah. or something. And, you know, it, 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 the, the problem, Wayne LaPierre has been in there. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's been there. He he, Whoa. thirty thirty some thirty years, thir- over thirty, and you know, and they're they're flying his ass, they're flying his ass to like, um, to like the Bahamas, and the, you know, he went on this big trip to the Bahamas, and then remember we had to go down to Texas to the NRA convention for yes. meetings. Well, he got to fly in from the Bahamas on a private jet to that to that. That you know that convention, that was like twenty five thousand dollars. Like they're they're listing the airfare, like oh the air flight costs and what it is. I know the numbers. It's like well, he's flying private. You know, it's like forty thousand from New York to the Bahamas and twenty five thousand from Bahamas to Dallas. I'm like, yeah, that's not commercial. I, that's a that's a uh, that's a going rate for like a Cessna Citation yeah. to fly. You know. Yeah. Well, maybe, you know, you know, you know, maybe, maybe. A do we do we know what the hell he was doing in the Bahamas or in Italy or in you know Kamchatka or wherever the hell he's spending his out of the country time? Well, see, you know what? That's the thing because they talk about like you know, well, he's they're going around that are meeting with people and they're working on pro gun stuff, but a lot of it is personal travel. But I did notice in the paperwork like there's a trip to Italy, and look, they're not dumb. If you look at the trip to Italy, the specific thing it mentions is Brescia, which is where all of the the gun companies in Italy are based in the Brescia Valley or whatever it's called. Yeah. 
So, like, he could make the argument when he went there to meet with Beretta and all these other companies and maybe to film stuff and have meetings. It's just whatever place. You know, I mean, it's like that. I mean, I mean, if you don't know what Brescia is, you're going to look at Italy and be like, fuck you. If you know what Brescia is, you're going to look at it and be like, okay, I, I can see that. But this was interesting. The Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal, at the last paragraph of their article, talking about it there's apparently there's some girl they they, they only cat they characterize her as a they characterize her as a young girl they characterize her as a young girl yeah and um uh she's an intern and i guess at some point they wayne wants this group whoever they they funnel all the stuff through to pay for this girl's rent and possible travel and and then this company's like they go who is this girl why are we paying her rent and what exactly is your relationship with her is, is you know and you she, can take that two ways she what way what summer science. intern yeah <laughs> yeah what summer intern project is she working on is she like a you know, is she a uh, uh, is she a law st- law student that wants to work on Second Amendment issues, and so she wants to be involved in something, or is she fucking hot? You know what I mean? I mean, I hate to say it like that, but it's like and that that or that paragraph in the last in the last uh, last article from the Wall Street Journal, that last paragraph. Yeah, there the war is not over, and they're playing real hardball. And Wayne tried to get in front of this at the NRA show and said, they're trying to blackmail me. And it's like, apparently we haven't seen all the blackmail that's going to come out. (laughs) Okay. And, and I will, and I'll, and I'll add this one, I'll add this one more statement. This is me personally to the listener. Cause during the NRA show, this was couched as Wayne LaPierre versus, versus um, Oliver North. And look, not that I have, a lot of a big relationship with Wayne LaPierre. I've seen the man personally once, not that I have a big relationship with, uh, with Oliver North. I've seen the man personally once, but if you flip a coin and you were to ask, which side do I want that coin to come down on every time? If I have to choose one or the other until proven otherwise, I'm coming down on the side of Oliver North. I mean, un- unless you can show me that Oliver North has taken NRA money and and doing uh, you know me love you long time Jack Shack shit yeah. with it, I you know it's like I don't know about this. Oh man, they forced Oliver or Oliver North out and Wayne Lapierre. I'm like uh, Wayne Lapierre has been here too long. Yeah, anymore. yeah, he has been there a long, long time. He's probably yeah, and the, you know, look comfortable with his uh, income and uh, and perks. See, and, you know, a lot of people, they get, they're like, well, you know, this is how CEOs work and this is all that stuff. And that's true. But what, what they're all forgetting is, look, the, the best example I can use, because everybody's pseudo familiar with this, the Trump organization, Donald Trump, Ivana Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, you know, then there's the grandkids and then there's the ex-wives and the wives and all the corporations, at the end of the day, some of the, I don't know if they're privately held or publicly held. They're probably privately held. I don't, I don't even know. But at the end of the day, those companies really are the Trump family's property. It's their business. It's their properties. It's their endeavors. It's their actions. Of course, you know they don't get 401ks. They don't get a retirement plan. Their retirement plan is the company. The company exists to make money and fiduciary responsibility of the company in the best interest of the families so they can benefit off of it. That's how these private companies yeah. work. The NRA is not a private company. And, you know, Wayne LaPierre has got 30 years into this company and it's just, you know, it's gone a little bit more money, a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. And it's, I can, you can just tell this is way out of control. Yeah. And and then there's one final thing, and I don't know if this is true, but I suspect that I can't prove it. But Mac from Mac from 
Mili- military arms. What's his name? Matt. Yeah. Uh, whatever his name yeah. is. His name's not Mac. What's his actual name? Shit, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> that dude has been battling with the NRA for a long time. Was trying to get. I think he might have been trying to get like on the board. Then Adam Adam Kraut, who's the lawyer from Pennsylvania, that's been trying to get on the NRA board. And it's really interesting that they these guys with all this social media and all this juice and all this following, they're trying to get all their members the vote to get these guys on the board to make the board accountable. But I think I think the the elections, the tallies are not made public. Like the vote of like the counting processes aren't made public. And they just happen to never they never make it onto the board. But like Mar- Marilyn Hamner that that fud woman from Florida somehow always manages to get on. She didn't even show up to the board meetings. There's problems at the NRA. There's huge problems, and it's bigger than Wayne, and it's bigger than some little chick. The NRA is turning into, I mean, I hate to goddamn say this, but the NRA executive level, the way the board functions, it's it's it, it, it's best. There's so much impropriety that it needs to be blown apart. At worst case, it's complete fraud. I don't disagree with that. That assessment. board is a fucking wreck. Oh, it is. It is. And I um, mean, you know, and it's been that way for a long time. This isn't something new that just I mean, it's new for you know, it's it's being brought to light now, but this is not something that just started yesterday. This has been going on for a while. It's been going on for a couple of years. Yeah. And like, so check this out. So I guess I don't know how much money they're hemorrhaging, but I heard uh, there when one of these documents supposedly there's a law firm and a lawyer and he won't and the NRA won't even actually audit his books. But in legal fees, he's averaging a hundred thousand dollars a day in legal fees charging. What? That's crazy. Oh, and after all this happened, you told me that you got a letter or a, a, a recruitment thing from the NRA <laughs> yeah. saying, saying what now? Oh, it was a letter saying that, uh, you know, it was, it was a typical and all NRA members get it. You know, it's a, it's a basically we want your money, you know, send us a donation. But the letter was like, uh, you know, we could be going out of business if you don't give us money. We need more money or we could, you know, we the NRA just might actually have to shut its doors and close down. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it's, yeah. and, and I guarantee you there's, there's, there's thousands of guys out there who stroked a check because God forbid we don't lose down because we'll lose all our rights and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? Don't insult me and ask me for money at the same time. That offends me. Where's bump stock? Yeah, where's the where's the bump stock? Yeah. Where's the where's our bump stocks? But yeah, where's national? What about these bullshit red flag laws? You know, mm-hmm. uh huh. We don't have national reciprocity. Yeah. We 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 don't have bump stocks. Uh, we've got all these bullshit red flag laws popping up. You know, well, you know what? Address these issues and I might give you more money because I've given the NRA a lot of fucking money over the years. And so have you. Yes. You know, you know, and like little broke ass gun owners of America is marching into all these federal courts challenging this shit all the time. Yeah. You know, but supposedly the NRA and Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox, they got Trump's ear, but they never bothered to mention national CCW reciprocity. No. Or how about the importation? How about the 89 import ban? Trump can fucking just do that with a pen. He doesn't need Congress to do that shit. And it's just like, you know, we don't hear bullshit. We don't hear fucking boo out of the NRA. But somehow Wayne LaPierre is rolling in fucking uh, rolling in in goddamn doubloons like some kind of rap star. You know, and it's just like it's crazy. I don't really give a shit if he's talking to Beretta or whoever in Italy. I don't give a shit if he's talking to foreign gun manufacturers because I don't really fucking care. You know what he needs to be? He needs to be in the fucking White House sitting sitting down with Trump talking to him about the issues we just brought up because those are more important to me than whatever the fuck he's talking about in Italy while he's getting a rub and tug by some Italian chick talking to Beretta or whatever the fuck he was doing over there. 
is probably in is probably in Italy negotiating with Beretta for Beretta to give him high dollar fancy shotguns so they can uh, give use them as enticements to raise money for as a giveaway for the NRA. Yeah, okay, you know what? I don't give a shit about NRA's giveaways. I question the validity of those anyway, and I have for years. Um, but my point is, but my point is, how does that benefit the gun owners? That's just to get more money yeah. to, to, to keep the keep the the to keep them alive in private jets. Well, or or to pay their attorney a hundred k a day, which is insane. You know, look, yeah. they they need to work for us, not for themselves. And mm-hmm. and the NRA stopped working for us a long time ago. It's true. Yeah. The NRA stopped working for us a long time ago. Yeah. And you know what? I look. I don't know all the ins and outs, but I but I know what I, what the documents are saying, and I know what there's being whispered. Oliver North looked at these numbers and was like, "What the fuck?" You know, here's the thing. But Oliver North was has wasn't the president of the NRA for like three days. Looked at the books and had a meltdown. I mean, uh, Oliver North has been president for what? Is it just a year? Or has it been multiple years now? Oh, it's been a I, I, shit. I don't know how many years, but it's it's been more than a year. I think it's been more than a year, and it's like, well, okay. When did Oliver North realize there was a problem? Was this was this money hemorrhage and all this spending a problem a year ago, or two years ago, or three years ago, or is it a problem now because maybe somebody's gravy train's over? What did you know and when did you know it is always the worst, worst two questions to ask for p- people in positions of power. And, you know, this is this the NRA is a fucking wreck. And, you know, the only thing they do is and we talked about this already. The only thing they do is give uh, is uh, letter rankings to people yeah. that you and I could do in five minutes. Yeah. So. Hey, um, speaking of which, did you. I'm I because I was busy. I missed a lot of this. There was some shooting at some school in Colorado. Yes, and they're calling they call they're calling it a STEM school, so science, technology, engineering, math, maybe. So, which is like okay, I don't understand why it's called a STEM school. I don't even. It's fine. I'm sure it's great, but I guess there was a vigil that they held. And a bunch of Democratic politicians showed up at this vigil with all the students, and they started talking about gun control and and shitting on over the NRA, and all the kids walked out. Have you heard about yeah, that? I had not heard that. There's these kids. These kids weren't having it. They were like – and I'm not going to say that the kids were like totally pro-gun, but apparently the kids felt like they did not want – their tragedy to be used by politicians for their personal agendas. And so they literally walked out and they suppose it's on video and there's reports. I haven't seen this one on video, but they were chanting mental health, (laughs) not gun control. They're good for them, you know, and it's, you know, it reminds me there was a, there's an article that, or there was a statement or observation like a few months ago, maybe a year ago, that they were saying that the liberals don't want to hear this, but they were saying that the young kids today, and I don't, you know, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, but I don't even remember how it all works. But let's say like 20 and under. So not millennials, like they're under, they're under whatever. Or I think are. Gen Xers or something like that. What? No, Gen X, I'm like a Gen Xer. I don't know. There's Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. There's a millennial in there somewhere. I'm not even sure. Yeah, okay. So, but but they're saying that on balance, a lot of these kids are conservatives. There's been some studies, or they're more conservative than like this argument that the Democratic Party can assume that young kids born in modern times are just guaranteed to be voting for Democrat. And to be voting for all these social issues is not true. Huh, really? And that may be some of the motivation for why the Democrat Party wants to bring in poor, broke, leftist immigrants into the country. Because they can't count on the young kids. Hmm, that's interesting. I've not heard that uh, 
I've not heard that. You know, and I had heard it, and I was like, you know, you got to watch reporting because sometimes reporting, you know, it really you got to see who's who's benefit. You know, is it really true or is it benefiting in some level, some group? Some group that is, you know, that is, you know, a subject of the reporting is it really more spin. Yeah. But I was shocked that these kids walked out of the school that, for this auditorium. No, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm good for them. You know, that was it was pretty that was pretty cool. You know, because so. <clears throat> the truth is, all these Democratic politicians, you know, they don't give two shits about any of these dead kids. They were there to to promote uh gun control oh oh there is i'm not saying that they they're you know that that they're happy with the tragedy but on on some level you know all these gun control peoples i mean they they are happy with these tragedy yeah you know when i that's that i mean that's that's it sounds horrible but it's, it's true because because every tragedy is an opportunity for them It is, you know, like uh, what was it when um, Piers Morgan and um, Ben Shapiro went at it when Piers was on CNN? And I think this probably put Ben Shapiro on the map for a lot of people. I mean, at least maybe even for me. I don't know, but you know, he, you know, he basically was accusing Ben Shapiro, or uh, he was accusing Piers Morgan of quote standing on the graves of dead kids. Yeah. And you know, Piers Morgan kept going, "How dare you!" How dare you? And uh, he goes, you can keep saying how dare you all you want, but you obviously, you are not interested in dealing with the subject at hand. You just want to, you staying on the grace of dead kids. And he starts going all these examples of, you know, these tragedies. And, you know, how dare you? That was, that literally was the end of uh, Piers Morgan in the U.S. Yeah. That, that truly was his, that was the final nail in his coffin. I mean, it wasn't too much longer after that that he was done at CNN. He went back to England. You know, maybe there's something to this. Because actually, you know what? There's a woman. You don't know who this woman is. You don't know who this woman is. If you if you know who this woman is, I will shit and fall back in it. Do you know who Kara Swisher is? Nope. Then you're better off for it. Um, <laughs> she's not a dumb woman. I'm not even going to say. If you, you listen to her, you know who Kara Swisher is. I know who Kara Swisher is because we work in media. So Kara Swisher um, – just assume she's a liberal, but she's a lesbian too, by the way. She's a lesbian liberal. She works in media. She lives in New York and bounces between New York and California. Okay. She's got some teenage children. She's got, and she has this can. She has teenage children. Okay. Um, I think she was. I think before she was a lesbian, she she obviously had. She was married to a man, I guess. I, I maybe not. I don't okay, know. Whatever. But but she's got she's got teenage children, and you know. One of her big complaints is one or more than one of her kids likes Ben Shapiro and finds him on the internet, and she doesn't like that. Okay. And she said, I keep catching my child watching this Nazi Ben Shapiro on on Facebook or on YouTube. Ben Shapiro, a Nazi? Seriously? <laughs> I think I... That's basically how she views him. She may not have used the word Nazi, but she basically looks at Ben Shapiro as a white supremacist, alt right, total right wing wackadoo. Okay. And he's a little Jewish guy that wears the little the little hat on his head, yeah. and he lives in he's born and raised in L.A. And you know, I mean, you know, it, it's like yeah, he's this. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Ben Shapiro nice to know that his hood hides his yarmulke. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and it's just like maybe there's something to this to younger kids. And look, I don't think I don't think Kara Swisher's kids, um, you know, like Ben Shapiro because, you know, they're like they're attracted to his magnetic personality. He's not some Svengali or uh, some, uh, um, you know, this, this, you know, Jonestown guy. No, he's a very, he's a, he's a very logic. He's a very logically oriented person. Look, 
and he he makes sense when he talks. Let me tell you something. Ben Shapiro is the one guy in the universe that I would not want to be sitting across from trying to make a counter argument. He could be sitting there saying the sky is purple, and by the time it's done, he's going to win. <laughs> I mean, the guy is the guy's brilliant, and it's he's normally pretty prepared. Oh yeah. Um, you know, but you know what? Like all of us, he has said some shit when he was younger on social media that he is he is quote disavowed or he is, you know, he has matured and grown sure. on, and so he gets a little defensive on some of that. But he gets in front of it and tries to say, "Look, I I said this ten years ago, and I've now learned more, and I'm you know, it's nothing really bad. Like it's nothing like I don't even know what it is. It's nothing like you know." Like what you know, the shit that comes out of like Muslim members of Congress every day. Yeah, you know it's nothing compared to that. But uh, you know, but you know, I hear you know I hear Kara Swisher complaining about her son. I hear about the STEM kids walking out of walking out of the the vigil for the dead kids, and then um and then like there was even you know like uh, who's the guy? There was this guy who used to work for uh, James Yeager, and he came up with this thing. It was a couple years ago, and he said. I can't remember the guy's name, but he said, he goes, he goes, when we were kids, because, you know, these guys, Jaeger, and they're, they're older than, than you or me. They're like our age. They're like, they're like, when we were kids, the counterculture was you got tattoos, you grew your hair long, you smoked dope, and you dropped out of school. And he said, today, he said he he had observed now, kids today, counterculture kids to piss off their parents is they buy an AR-15 and they uh, want to join the military. There's something else he said. But it's like because all these hippie parents from the 60s now have, you know, now they're probably in their 20s, late teens and 20s, yeah. You know, and, and have these kids that they think should be like good little hippies, and the good little hippies are rebelling, and they're turning into gun gun toting Republicans. <laughs> well, uh, that doesn't hurt my feelings. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's just it's interesting, you know, to see the argument. That's why. So, like, you know, you see the left or the right will complain that you know we have to, you know, you have to we have to do something about Facebook cracking down on on conservatives. You know, because there has to be regulation. Well, the left, their argument is we have to back, we have to crack down on Facebook and social media because Facebook got Donald Trump elected and YouTube keeps showing my kid Ben Shapiro videos. <laughs> you know, and it's like this is interesting. You know, you see the crossfire going to the same place and you're like, hmm, what's going on here? Um this is I kind of you know, we're talking about videos and stuff. I watch a lot of videos on the internet. It's kind of what I do. Um, yeah. And there's, I don't know, it's, it's a high-end restaurant. They serve a lot of wild game meat. I don't remember the name of the restaurant or where it's located. It doesn't matter. But a uh, bunch of these uh, vegan chicks like to go out there and protest, you know, and hold their signs up and stuff like that. And uh, on one hand, I don't know if it hurts the business or helps the business, but either way, that's irrelevant. <clears throat> but there was a guy out there, you know, because everyone's, you know, an Internet news anchor these days. And he's out there, you know, interviewing these women, you know, and reading their signs and doing all this stuff. And he, he went up to several of the women and, uh, you know, it's like, you know, what, what's wrong with, you know, you know, he's talking about, you know, the vegan shit and, uh, and they're all like, you know, it's terrible to kill animals and they deserve, they don't want to be killed and they deserve to live, you know, the typical vegan crap that you hear, you know, and everyone's probably seen a hundred videos sure. like this, but this is the first time I ever asked, heard a guy asking me, he's like, you know what? He's like, your sign looks pretty much like a sign you would see outside of an abortion clinic. He's like, are you um, uh, anti-abortion? And not one vegan there would say, yes, I am. They're like, well, that's really not the point. We're here talking about animal rights and blah, blah, blah. You know, and it would have been just really simple to sit there and say, uh, no, abortion's horrible. You know, I mean, we don't believe in killing anything, much less kids, but not one of these, because you know, they're all fucking liberals, you know, 
Um, I've never seen a vegan that was a conservative, but, um, you know, it's, it's interesting how they all dodged the abortion question. You know what? I never thought about that. Neither, neither did I. And he That's- brought this up and I thought, wow, that, what a brilliant argument. And they were all like, you know, they were doing everything in their power to avoid answering that question. And it's like, really, why would a vegan be pro-abortion? But yet. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Well, you know. Well, you know what? It's it's a it's a logical failure in 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 uh, in uh you know not having a not maintaining your intellectual integrity. You know, it's like you know that's it's an example of one of those things in life. Like I'm not telling people what to believe or what to think or you know I I change my mind on things and you know grow and whatever. But you should always try to come to your own conclusions and figure out how you got there. As opposed to just this is good, this is bad. Whether whether you're talking about veganism versus abortion, or whether you're talking about Glock versus 1911, it's better to have a way that you got to where you be able to justify how you got to where you are today. So if you need to change your mind tomorrow, at least it's one step. It's not like an entire worldview change. It's you can logically you know, work your problems going forward and, and you know, and, and, and stay intellectually consistent in life. Cause I think that's usually one of the really important things to do yeah. to, you know, maintain your integrity. Yeah, absolutely. You know, how, you know, why do I think what I think? Dude, I never thought about that. Veganism versus abortion. Yeah. Blow. I have blown away by that. Yeah. I, Holy I'm cow. watching this video and I'm thinking, wow. Holy crap! Because I never really right, like, and right now, right now, Kara Swisher's like, "God damn it, freeze! <laughs> Quit watching this shit on Facebook." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's like, um, uh, it's it's like, I never really looked at it that way before, you know. And it's like, if I was one of these vegans and someone asked me that question before the question, you know left the person's lips, I'd be like, oh, absolutely, totally wrong, totally wrong, you know? I mean, it, it, it's like, okay, so, you know, in New York, you can you can kill a baby up to the day of its birth, you know, but... Yeah. Oh, dude, now you can, you can kill babies after they're born. You know, yeah, so, you know... That's what they're proposing in Virginia, apparently. You know, it's like, oh... And here's the thing... You know, new, news flash for the listener. I'm pro-choice personally, but it's like this is out of fucking control. Mm-hmm. This shit is crazy. Oh, like I'm pro-choice, but I, I I don't think I don't think Planned Parenthood should get a dime of federal fucking. Oh, money. I totally agree. I mean, I first off, I believe Planned Parenthood should be accountable to where uh, where they spend every one of their fucking dollars, and they're like, oh, there's no way to break it down. And you, as a businessman, know that's a bold faced fucking lie, you know. But you know what? The same the same people that are you know that would that would write articles in support of that position would love to know where every dollar of Wayne LaPierre's uh, massage therapist money. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I want to know where every dollar of his massage. <laughs> every the, want to look for the freaking look, board because hell, who doesn't want to rub in a tug three times a week? Look, I, I gotta be careful. So let's say this. Look, we don't know if she's a massage therapist, but the world the world wants to know is Wayne Lapierre's NRA summer intern is she hot? Everybody wants. Everybody's dying to know this. <laughs> What's going on here? Is she a nerdy bookworm? Is she man? I've never I've never seen a girl that can like you know that can drop in triggers and AR-15s and tune them. She's awesome. Like, is she a future gunsmith or is she a future Miss Hawaiian Tropic? You know, it's like let's be real. Let's be real here. What? Because I know a lot of dudes that would love to be Wayne Lapierre's summer intern. Depending on what the job actually oh. is, so <laughs> so having a ton job, I'm not applying. But you know, <laughs> but, oh hey, my God. triggers in an AR, sign me up. Yeah, you know we gotta we gotta we gotta shut this down here soon. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two things. Okay. 
Um, these are pseudo. This one pseudo police blotter, and one is just like you're not even going to believe it. Okay. So, well, let me find it here. So, um, you know, who Larry Vickers is right. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with the name. Yes. Yep. Um, Larry Vickers for about a week. His Facebook page. These guys they hijack his Facebook page, and. Like they were posting like uh, uh, the Autobot Wars videos. They were posting cat videos. <laughs> they were posting. They were posting videos that they had like that they had recorded and didn't want to publish. They were posting duplicate videos. They were posting videos from other gun channels. They were fucking his shit up for like a. Do week. we know who was doing this? You know what? We don't. But it looked to me like somebody from Russia. Like I perceive, I perceive, <laughs> I perceive them to be, I don't know, Indian, Pakistani, subcontiny. I just, I don't know why. Like some of the verbiage yeah. and the way they talked, you know, maybe Sri Lanka, you know, maybe Indonesia. But I'm just say from like, from like, say like the upper steps of the from the from the plateaus of the Iranian plateau. All the way down to like Singapore, I'm willing to bet you that the person lived somewhere or people live somewhere in there just from the verbiage of it. So, but I guess he looks like he's got control of his Facebook page back and uh, that's under control. Um, And this isn't a police blotter, but I wish it was a police blotter. (coughs) Do you know, do you believe in Bigfoot? Um, No. No, okay. Let me let me explain when I say no. No, <clears throat> I don't believe in Bigfoot per se. But if someone showed up with a bloody Bigfoot carcass, I'd be like, eh, okay, cool. Because weirder things have happened. Hmm. I wanted to believe in Bigfoot, you know. And I, when I used to think the world was really big, I'm like, there's probably something out there somewhere. Yeah. But, you know, as I've gotten older and more experienced, I'm like, yeah, there, there's no Bigfoot. So do you know where the most the most Bigfoot sightings are? Uh, Can you take a guess where you think it is? Ohio. Be? You fucker, you saw it. No, no, <laughs> no. no. Um, actually, uh, I know a little bit about Bigfoot because uh, I supplied the uh, the bones and props for an indie Bigfoot movie several years back, if you remember. No, I don't. Want In Ohio, they call Bigfoot uh, Grassman because you know Bigfoot's got different names, different locations. <clears throat> and there was I didn't know that either. A small indie movie called The Grassman Chronicles, and when they were making it, um, by a bunch of local guys, um, they were looking for. Um, they put a uh, a Craigslist post up. They were looking for for bones, you know, for, to use as props while they were making the movies. And, um, <clears throat> and I responded to it and I said, Hey, cause you know, uh, freeze does have a bone yard in his woods. And, um, that's right. So I, I reached out to him and said, Hey, um, uh, yeah, I got bones. I said, you gotta, you gotta go out in the woods and pick them up yourself. I said, but, uh, I got plenty of bones. Cause at the time there was probably 20 or 30, skeletons back in the boatyard and deer carcasses don't i gotta i keep her like what's going uh, on no, 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 no. <laughs> there, when i process my own deer and anyone who processes deer has to do something with the uh you know the bones and stuff so you know in, in the hides and that and so i th- i've got a spot in my woods where i dump the uh, carcasses you know and they you know the coyotes eat them and they degrade and whatever so they came out with a couple of big duffel bags and picked up. I mean, yeah, they pretty much cleaned up the boneyard. So anyway, long story short, I know a little bit about, you know, and they, they were telling me they were making a movie about Bigfoot, you know, and that's how I know Ohio has one of the highest. I don't know if it's the highest, but it, but there are, there are a ton of Bigfoot sightings in the state of Ohio. Listen to this. Ohio is apparently one of the best states for Bigfoot. Bigfoot spottings, according to a newly released ranking from the Travel Channel. The Travel Channel revealed the eight best places to catch a glimpse of Bigfoot using data from the Bigfoot Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. 
the BFRO, according to the ranking. <laughs> the data combines eyewitness accounts analyzing 23,000 sightings across the country, according to the ranking. The Travel Channel then determined the eight states with the highest likelihood of having your own Bigfoot encounter, a higher rank six with 1,042 sightings. The Travel Channel said the eastern half of the state had the most sightings. Washington claimed the number one spot. Other top-ranked states include New York and Pennsylvania. I I was shocked. I just figured it would be like... Uh, well, you know, yeah. I've spent a fair amount of time in the woods over the years. I mean, you know, obviously, um, you know, yeah. I've spent uh, quite quite a few days out in the field, and I've never seen a big Bigfoot. Uh, I would have loved to have seen a Bigfoot, but I've never seen one, and I've never heard one. I've never heard Bigfoot howls, and you know, and if you watch these, you know shows about Bigfoot. It's like, whatever, dude. I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is Bigfoot out there. I've never seen one. Uh, I kind of find it hard to believe that no one's seen a, 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 look, how many deer get hit by a car every year in every state across the nation? You know, someone would have fucking run over, you know, some 18 wheeler would have plowed into a Bigfoot somewhere, you know, (laughs) <laughs> there's no there's no roadkill there's no skeletons there's i mean you know i, I don't know I, if there if there's that many sightings over over the course of a year would you say 2600 sightings or something like that uh, they said according to this article there were 23000 sightings across okay, the if, i don't know over what time period that okay was. if there's 23000 sightings the one bigfoot that's out there is a very busy dude or or you would think you would find a dead bigfoot somewhere because you know they got to die of natural causes or you know typhoid or you know i don't know smallpox or something choke to death on a slope exactly um i mean you know i just yeah, yeah. I just thought that was interesting. I was like, yeah, big fun, huh? Well, I'll tell you what. I, if I had, I had forgot about all your bones in your boneyard, I'll tell you what we should do. What we should have done is you take the bones, we should grind them up, and then we should um, grind them up into powder, put it in a little, like, uh, pill bottle, yeah. and then label the pill bottles as rhino horn, God. and then get on Alibaba in China <laughs> and list them on Alibaba for $1,000 and uh, sell them to Chinese people is rhino horn. And you want to know why? Because they sell fake shit to us all the time. And so we could sell sh- fake shit to them and uh, at least do something to help, you know, help the rhino population. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? It'd be great. We'd be helping the rhino population and we'd be helping the, 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 the boner problem in China. <laughs> all right. Well, this wraps up episode 133 of the John 911 podcast. If you want to see any articles or links to the stories we talked about regarding the boner population in China, please go to our website, john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day. See you later. Boner problem.